meeting of October 17, 2018. I'd like to read a little message to all of our uh, guest people. The Ross Valley Sanitary District Board of Members welcomes members of the public in this meeting, encourage citizen participative input. The board takes seriously its responsibility to be a model of civility and to safeguard the public ability to correctly address the board by providing the appropriate board meeting to quorum in accordance with resolution 10-1378, which is posted at every board meeting. Thank you. Roll call. Forstein? Yes. Kelly? Here. Bates? Here. Scylla? Here. Gaffney? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adjourn to close the agenda and move to the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're missing one. We're missing one. Well, let's go through seven open times for public to bring these claims not only to the agenda or the future. Again, this I assume that's I have a question. Yeah. So this is me. And it's quite the Yeah. When there's no public, mm -hmm. do we you go through that every every agenda item? Um yeah, I mean it's on the agenda, so you should say open time for public. No, I mean no public. each agenda item. When there's no public here. And you go down to number seven. Would anybody like to discuss it when there's nobody in the world? Um I mean I guess technically you don't have to say, would anyone like to discuss it? If it's coming over here, you have it on video too. Yeah. Um and the minutes if the minutes reflect I think I should public, just say there's no you're not gonna get in trouble for not having it. Okay. I just, it seems dumb. It's like it's those little rat maces at the bank when there's nobody there. <laughs> That's where you come down. She's here. Okay, standing committee reports. Uh, HR committee. Yeah, you want to do it? Uh, sure. <laughs> the, uh, the HR committee met on Monday. We reviewed items that are in tonight's agenda, including items 11, 12, 13, and 16D, not 16E. Um, and uh, that included, most importantly, I think, the personnel policy book, which represents a ton of work by staff, and um, I think is remarkable. Um, and, and it's had the union weigh in on it as well. Um, so, uh, it's there are a few things right that they don't they have not they have not totally signed off on if I'm correct yes, that are incorporated in the side letter right yeah. they're incorporated in the side letter with something else we reviewed um, so you know it's our court it's our quarterly HR meeting and we just had um, the things that are on the agenda tonight um, which we reviewed in detail and uh, had staff answer questions about Michael anything else you want to say about that no okay. Okay, thank you <laughs> finance committee. Um, you can do that if you want to. Yeah. Uh, why don't you do it? Can you do it? Sure. Here's the agenda. Yeah. We, we, so the finance committee met uh, yesterday um, and we reviewed the interim financial statements, which looked fine to us. There was nothing that we thought was startling. Um, we looked at the check register. We had a couple of questions on the check register. We're hiring some temporary agencies, both from Robert Half and Nelson, Nelson mm -hmm. for different types of jobs. Um, so that was. Uh, that was fine. We didn't see anything in the check register that seemed odd. We were at $59,000 this month in um, laterals, and we thought that was on pace and on target and looked good. It was 23 laterals. Yeah. And we discussed having a lateral per foot report for the end of the year. Is the end of the year we asked for Yes. End of year matrix. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And so to, start to see and to be able to report to the State Water Resource Board, how many feet of lateral were replaced and what percentage that means. We wanted to include uh, ones that we didn't want, you know, the, mm -hmm. the public did as part of our program. Um, how do we know about them? We, we keep track. They, they, they get permits. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, and we looked at the legal, which, sorry, we're all kind of unhappy that keeps going in the wrong direction. Well, not all of us. <laughs> At least one of us in that <laughs> <laughs> no 
<laughs> the board. She has other things she could be working on. Yeah, the board is, is a little over clump about the fact that it keeps going in the wrong direction. But it, as mentioned, um, uh, some of that is for um, contract work. We're really in the, in the throes of a lot of contract work. And uh, so I'll leave that at, at that. Um, the, we did look at the personnel uh, policy book, which is a huge uh, amount of work. We really appreciate all the work that's been going into that and appreciate the uh, employees' input as well. So, um, uh, and the same with number nine, the uh, Ross Valley uh, Sanitary District and the local union, which you know, the, I think that's going well. And, you know, I think this, this board has repeatedly stated our admiration for the employees of this district. They're really, uh, really good people. Um, so that was uh, that. What else did we do? Um, to consult professional, Hildebrand Consulting. Okay, so we looked at all of these companies, uh, and this was, uh, Tom and I did this twice, we had two meetings, regarding the rates for, uh, the rate study for next year. And we looked at Hildebrand, Municipal uh, Financial Services, um, HDR, Raftelis, NBS, and HF and H. Um, the lowest bidder was um, Municipal, but um, we went, our suggestion is Hildebrand Consulting, which was the second to lowest. We also discussed with um, the representative of Hildebrand, Mark, Mr. Mark, Mark Hildebrand, um, to add some parts to the study to include uh, the fact that we want him to look at the tax rates of Larkspur um, in reference to the ad valorem that the other districts are paying, and they're not. So we want to see if Larkspur's uh, variance is, is accurate or fair, or if it's too low or too high. We also asked to have him look at the consolidated uh, districts, which was in the reports. Most of them, and when I went through those, most of them mentioned that they knew that there was a uh, Possibility of us consolidating with uh, San Quentin Village and uh, Murray Hill. Is it Murray Hill or Murray Park? Murray, Murray Park. Murray Park. So he, we've asked him to look at that. Um, the capital improvement is where uh, Tom wanted him to, to spend some time because it's hard for us to judge the capital improvement. And if we don't know what the capital improvement is, it's hard for us to know what our new rates should be. So we're going to spend some time. But as far as um, some of the other issues that he thought would take some time, uh, Tom pointed out that the uh, last rate study has a lot of data, and there's a lot of data on our website, and we have a lot of that, so it, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So one of the, uh, if I remember, one of the bids was like $180,000, and we picked 59. It was 103, and we picked 49. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> no, 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 anyway, okay. It was 108. 108. Okay. Yeah. And we picked 49, as you're absolutely correct. And, and municipal was at 38.4. Um, if you have any comments on why you were well, so keen on municipal. Well, one, Hildebrand is in the Bay Area. Yeah. And the other one is in uh, Nevada. Yeah. And the, uh, Anderson. Yeah. Yep. And the key work could be done from somebody in Nevada, and we thought it was much, much better. Hildebrand's in Oakland. And we have then the principal at Hildebrand with you know, the interview. And, and we looked at some of his other work. We looked at de detail. So that was uh, that. Was that. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, so we have, and it's not on the agenda, but we'll have a verbal report on that. Okay. But uh, let's do central mine and sanitation. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. I couldn't find the guy's resume. Which guy? The, the, the one Alicia mm -hmm. and I talked. Yes, and, and, I, and, and I have a handout uh, available um, that we can distribute now. We're going to talk about it a little later on in the agenda, but um, you're absolutely right on the uh, uh, copy that was distributed and on the PDF that was posted to the website. Page 25 did not fully um, uh, copy, and so the section on Mark Hildebrand's uh, education um, and his uh, qualifications, membership, specialization in financial areas of practice uh, were not um, were not shown. And so, Director Meggs is correct that uh, that that information was actually missing um, from the from the agenda packet. However, the finance committee had seen it because it was part of this proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the. And we'll talk about that, that on the agenda. On um, the agenda. Let's do that. 
Can I ask one more question on this? Sure. Um, I could not find anything recently around here. The last thing I saw was 2007 with Hillsborough. Did I miss something? He's currently working for the city of Santa Rosa and they've been doing a wastewater study for them. And I think we also have some additional information. Again, it's the pleasure of the board if you'd like to talk about let's, this. Let's do it. Okay. Now. Okay. okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, Central Marine. Yeah. Okay. It was a big day at Central Marine. It seems that the board stipend was last appended in 1987. <laughs> and nobody said anything about it until 2018. So they brought it up and there was a large discussion. Um, and it went from $100 a meeting to $225 a meeting. Uh, which was where Nevada is and sort of median of where people are in Marin County and uh, the, the board was all good with that and so that got passed. Um, there's, uh, we have a cogeneration system that basically uh, produces all the power every year that uh, CMSA needs to operate and it saves CMSA and this is not written anywhere correct me if I'm wrong million dollars a year um, and we uh, the CMSA is actually considered the cleanest business in Marin County um, because of that it's like 100% this is a little ironic but <laughs> um, and so we have a 750 kilowatt generator there right now that's uh, producing the electricity for us. And recently there was a problem with it that went down and there's a scramble, we got it up pretty quick. Um, so we uh, took into consideration um, having a maintenance agreement with a local manufacturer that will come on site and maintain it and fix it for us. And so we went ahead and passed that. Um, we at the same time have every intention, we have all the, uh, everything in place to actually begin to sell electricity back onto the grid. Um, we've got the approval from pg and &E, we made a contract with Green Green Energy, um, and uh, what we don't have currently is uh, if we really start generating energy, we don't have a generator that's big enough to do that. Um, and so we recommended that we uh, authorize the general manager to sign an agreement uh, to come up with a cogeneration system pre-design evaluation to throw in a one megawatt uh, uh, generator in, the, in addition to the 750,000, 750K uh, generator that we have in place currently. So in theory, if we ever were able to, we could go up to 1.75 megawatt uh, of power, which we would be selling a tremendous amount back. That requires a lot of things. It requires getting a whole lot more uh, organic material to digest. Uh, but anything's possible into the future. Uh, beer breweries will be bringing their stuff in, uh, cheese manufacturers, and other things. So there's lots of <coughs> sources of organic materials, uh, but in order, we're getting our ducks lined up. Um, it also means that in the future, if one generator goes down and needs maintenance, you can bring up the other one and we don't have the situation we were in a few months ago. Um, and last year, uh, Tom and I asked uh, that we look at a 10-year capital improvement plan. and sort of even everything out so that we don't have more than a 4% increase a year. Um, and uh, it's coming up that time already that we have to start looking at uh, issuing some debt. And so there's some question about when to issue the next debt because there's a good possibility that interest rates are on a rise now. And so you might want to issue the debt earlier because ultimately, if we get a lower interest rate, 
it'll save money. It means we have to start paying back the interest on it sooner, but that may balance out with the uh, raise in interest rates. So we're looking at that now, and I believe we have a meeting, a finance meeting next week, and uh, I want to say a couple things. Yeah, Michael and I are on the finance committee. Um, you know, we do a uh, metrics report, which is pretty comprehensive. And uh, in September and October, uh, Ross Valley was 44% of their flow. And, um, you know, during peak wet weather, we went up to 52%. So it means that our wet weather is, you know, our INI is worse than our partners. So that's why we're working on that. But when, uh, during the two month period of September and October, the requirement for them is that they've got to remove 85% of uh, suspended solids and biological oxygen demand, which is the wastewater project. And, you know, that's the national standard. In, um, in those two months, the district removed over 99% of total uh, suspended solids and in mid 98% of uh, chemical and biological oxygen. I mean, it's, it's probably one of the top treatment plants in the Bay Area. Uh, the other thing that we, Michael and I, suggested uh, about two years ago was they look for a state revolving fund loan for the cogen project. They got it. And so they went for a, a revolving fund loan and they got a 75% grant. Wow. So even better. So of all the studies, it's about $650,000. We're going to get at least $500,000 of um, the loan that's forgiven, so we don't have to pay it back. And we only have to pay about 100 and something thousand for all those cogen studies that we're doing. And let's see, I think that was the other one. Yeah, thank you. That's what's coming. Thank you. How about the North Bay Watershed? Um, they're in the process. They hired Lori Lewis to do a strategic plan. And um, it's totally unlike what we experience. It's like people get up and move around the room and they do a poster board. It's called a vision, visioning process. So I felt like I was going back to the 60s. It was fun. Um, so we are looking at the mission statement, which is facilitate partnerships across political boundaries that promote stewardship of the North San Pablo Bay watershed resources. And they're sort of kind of revamping. I don't think they've ever done a strategic plan, but people have a lot of ideas. And I did not know that Grant Davis was one of the leaders who actually sort of prodded and pushed and got this going with other groups, um, and that was in the year 2000, and then having to get some money together. Um, and so that was the, the beginning of the partnerships, and it's developing more and more. Um, American Canyon now has joined North Bay Watershed. Ooh, I can't think of a couple of others. <clears throat> so. Um, it was fun. I believe a little earlier I went to my 1969 high school luncheon. So. <laughs> but it was good. Michael, you were there. Maybe you have more to add. Mm -hmm. Pretty fun. It's a good organization. Hey, thanks. Uh, agenda item 9 is noble report by board members and staff and request for future items. It does. So I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of things. The, um, Educational Outreach Ad Hoc Committee, Pam and I met with Stephen, um, which, by the way, Stephen is just fantastic on this um, uh, subcommittee and just love him. Um, one of the things that we've done... Here, tell that to okay. <laughs> one of the immediate results is something that this board has been asking for for a long time, which is if you go to our agenda item page on our website, and you now see a little television, and you click on that, and our meetings come right up. And that right. has been Julie Dougie. and Steve, and I don't know who else worked on this, but really, really pleased to see that. That is serving the public. People can go and just find it. I mean, you know, nobody knew it was on YouTube. This is great. And they're all there, working on it, work in progress. Um, but I wanted to say that's fantastic. Um, Steve's been reaching out to other districts and organizations to find out what they're doing about outreach, and that's why I sent to um, 
Steve and the interim general manager today uh, an article on the front page of the New York Post regarding uh, flushable wipes that have caused huge damage. They, they had scuba guys go down and literally swim through 90 feet of sewage to pull out a one-ton massive blockage that was uh, flushable wipes, which aren't flushable, fats and oils and grease. And of course, we all heard about London, which had something like a 423-ton blockage that was blocking up 85% of a 100-foot pipe. So um, the, one of the outreaches we talked about was changing some of the um, advertisements we have on the online version of the Marin IJ to talk about not just fats, oils, and grease, but what not to flush. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a project that's going on. Steve's done a great job. I didn't want to get too much into it, but uh, it's just, it's actually, you know, we wondered whether this would be a good subcommittee. I think it is. I think we're going to get some stuff out there. And I want to say, I'm so happy you're on this committee. Thank you very <laughs> Would much. you have, you've created some outreach. Yes, ma'am. And um, it, it's been well over needed for so long. So, and, and I think we're not going to have to reinvent the wheel. And it sounds like there's all these people and partnerships that are just going to, we're just going to have to pick and choose. So it won't be too hard. And by the way, um, this month is Take Back Month for prescriptions, and uh, you have all these events all over the world. So it's, it's on the Orange County website. And I would like to invite Rx Safe to come here and talk to us in, in a future meeting about um, syringes in the pipes and pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? Are we going to have to buy an aqua lungs for our staff? Uh, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> for he has yeah. plenty of ideas. I mean, he needs, he needs more now. <laughs> I, I, I do have just a couple of other things. I'm sorry. I, I was hearing that you know, other things that are also wipes are no good down there, but apparently dental floss. Yeah. When it gets down there, believe it or not, little dental floss. It gets together and it becomes like steel with other dental floss. Yeah. Oh. And, and then it has to be like sawed out. Mm -hmm. You can't just use a thing to de rag it. You actually have to go down and it's yeah. Don't flush your dental floss. Good info for the We're talking about. I don't know. Who flosses? Good meeting to talk to you about that, Mike. <laughs> That has just a couple of updates for the board. One, uh, uh, an announcement that uh, September was another no spill map oh, month, nice. so we're very happy to afford that. Congratulations to our fine crews there. Um, there's a couple of uh, personnel items I'd like to mention to the board. One is that we're back filling the administrative coordinator position, which was previously held by Julia <coughs> Kendi, who, of course, is now your clerk of the board. That recruitment process is coming to a close. I'll probably have more to report to you about it. Soon. And that Melvin Garcia, who the Finance Committee um, has certainly met, and some of the board also may remember from a previous board meeting, um, has officially been appointed to the accounting and financial analyst position. Um, lastly, I just want to mention this is on your agenda that the November meeting date has been moved from the 21st to the 20 to the 14th, and that the Finance Committee meeting then will be that uh, same week on November 13th. November what? November 13th for the Finance Committee okay. meeting, and November 14th for the Board meeting. Okay. Any other uh, rules? Okay, consent calendars. Mm -hmm. Matters listed under this item are considered routine or be enacted by one motion. Uh, does anybody want to remove any items from yes. the consent calendar? Yes. Yes. 10F. 10F. And 10H. And what was the other one? H. Each. So let's go to F. Uh, All right. Except the year old Page 70. And I actually called Felicia. And maybe I could have been out of my mind. My mother was dying, possibly during this time. So I did not know that we had taken money out of, some, out of our bond money. 1.25 million to seven of eight to um, pay for grants and loans with a debt of five percent. Somehow it came up in this report, and I wanted to check it all out with you. 
is that what we did? Because to me, that's it's like double that. Did we, did we do that? We put in the official statement that the group pay was one point five million dollars. Uh, it was 1.5 million. 1.5 million. On the budget or out of bond money? Out of bond money. Really? Yeah. 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 And why would we do that? Well, it's a capital project that helps us to do this bottom line. It's as yep. important as the districts um, paying, paying uh, you know, for, for projects that also reduce our high mm -hmm. That's the model. Uh, no, that's exactly right. I think um, Director Mike's had a question about uh, at what point in the process of the bond issuance that, that may have been discussed with the board, and so I did go back and review the minutes, and there is some uh, discussion, and it was at the Ross Valley Public Finance Authority meetings. Um, I, I don't know if you recall, but you know you, 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 you carry both of these hats mm -hmm. uh, as a board, as members of the board, and also members of the Public Finance Authority. And so that item was... Um, so with this discuss briefly. Okay, so five percent and one point two five million. What what is what is the constituent paying? Oh, in terms of the bond. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. debt came back. What's the debt, that? the debt issuance. It wasn't five percent. Well, she's, she's saying that the, the interest on the bond is four to five percent. Yeah, it's the interest on the bond. I guess what I need to know is how uh, no, it, it was more like four, not five. It was closer to four. Yeah, it was closer to four. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I just have never heard this before. I did, the question I is, I never ever heard of this. Wait a second. We, we discussed this even on the previous bond issue. Yeah. We yes, we did. We had a million. That was where I had a million. But I didn't know it was coming out of bond money. And well, I, it could be my, what I was going through, I don't know. But I just wanted to double check. Um, is this common? Is this conventional? Do, us, conventional? do a lot of sewers districts do this? Well, I mean, I think that the ball, I think that the lateral program is a relatively. I, I wouldn't say it's unique. I mean, East Bay Mud has a, a lateral program. I think there's. A, I'm not talking about lateral programs. I'm talking about how you take the money out of finance. Them. Yes. I don't I know about the lateral thing. It's, right. It's coming out of our ears. But what about doing it this way? Well, I think to Tom's point, it's a capital, it's, it's been defined as a capital project. It is a I capital just, project. Yeah. It's no different than, than replacing a well, project. But I've never seen it done. I've been here nine years, and I'm just trying to figure out what I feel is kosher and not to continue the rates to go up and up and up and up and up. And this is an added debt expense. So okay, I so appreciate you clarifying how it happened, because okay. I don't remember. Okay. Can I talk now? Yes. We did it on the previous bond issue, too. Did you know that? No. Well, we discussed it many times then. Okay. And well, I'll get the it, it, I'm talking now. And um, we can either pay these things from our cash, or we can pay it for the bond. We have both the bond financing program and a pay-as-you-go financing program. Basically, it's about the same. I mean, we pay for projects. Um, we don't have to spend the money on the model on the model front. We have options of any capital project we can spend it on. I don't see. Uh, you know, and I know we discussed it. And I, think, I believe it's a one of our better capital projects. I, I, I remember discussing it. I remember approving mm -hmm. it. Okay, and I, I, it. I because <laughs> I think changing a uh, lateral is I, no, Different than changing the pipe out in the street. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just do a comparison review of, of the area sewer and see how they're doing this because okay, well, I, I know how they're doing it. Well, one, one of the other things we're doing it right. That's good. Yeah. One of the other so, things I think we are uh, we're ahead of the bell curve on this. People are looking to our ordinance. Right. Yes. You know, to see what to do. But if she wants to look. No, 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 no. Uh, absolutely. I'm just saying I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Our ordinance and the way that we're doing things, because uh, I know that other people are looking at our ordinance and how we're doing it, because we've been extremely successful at it. The other thing I think you could look at, the other way I think you could look at it is, the district intended to issue bonds in the amount of twenty-five million dollars, and we, as a as a um, as a district, knew that we had at least twenty-five million dollars in capital projects that we were going to spend twenty-five million dollars on. So really, it's more of a policy statement by the board that at least a portion of that 
um, commitment to our infrastructure should go into uh, lateral infrastructure. So if you look at it, not just in terms of dollars and cents, but as policy direction, um, the dollars, the $25 million was, was what was going to be issued. The fact that the board uh, said, and a portion of that uh, financing, we want to make an investment in, in laterals in the district. And it happened to yeah, be a maximum yeah. of 5%. I agree. So I, I'm just thinking of smaller districts who can't afford even Grant just to, without bottling. We just don't have programs. Yeah, we have that luxury. Okay. The comment that I had on this, uh, right about that same, was that I wanted a summary of all of our bond issues. We mm -hmm. issued mm -hmm. three, and I wanted to have the original one out, you know, the, the name of the bond issue, the original one out, the currently outstanding, and the average uh, debt service. And we discussed that in the last committee. Uh, you know, let's, let's let everybody know uh, how much we're going on. Okay, and then there was uh, N H. H. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm trying to discern why this came about, that you didn't want term. Because we never got to be president. <laughs> no, that's essentially nobody on this the Ross Valley Sanitary Board pays half of CMSA, and yet no Ross Valley Sanitary Board representative is ever the president of CMSA, because we always route them out. As soon as you get in, you get a seniority, you're out. But there's been some people there like 30, 30 exactly. years, if and then you get into that. Those. And then what? You get into that. Right. It can't right. so, ever be turned no, no, but, out. But what we, what we talked about on this board was to have it serve the pleasure of the board. So in other words, if we want somebody out after two years, we say you're up. If we want somebody out after three years, we say you're up. Now, it just so happens that the president of the board is Diane First, who's being replaced. She's, She's resigning, and this is being her last meeting, the next meeting. The vice president of the board is, is our own uh, Michael Hornstein here, who may or may not be appointed president. I'm, I don't know how I'm voting. Um, I think I'm voting. I'll be coming up in mind. Um, but uh, the, the reason for that change was because CMSA never had the president's, uh, CMSA never had a Ross Valley member as president for not a long, long time. But it's not a guarantee. No, 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 no. no. It's just, it was that our, our own policy sort of made it impossible. Our policy, which we came up on our own, made that not likely. And we just didn't think that was a good idea. And now all of the other members seem to be appointed for fairly long terms. Uh, Al Moro, <laughs> maybe since I've been here, he is on health reasons. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Kathleen from Larkspur was there for right, so long time. I don't time. think it's going to change being more chair there. I don't. Well, I don't. no, it gives us well, a little more. Well, next meeting. Because her, next, her last meeting, Diane's next, last meeting, is next week or the week after it is. And so we'll know. Mm -hmm. Well, not only being president, but I think longevity on the board, because they seem to have, you know, we're, we're paying half, and we're sending relative novices compared to the other, to our partners, who staff it for a decade at a time, it seems like. And again, it doesn't have to be a decade for a lot of us. No, I don't think it would. Are it you serves? calling yourself a relative novice? <laughs> no, in the, the, in the, in the I guess for each one, my concern is, Creativity, new blood, new ideas. I mean, I was on there a year. I don't want to talk <laughs> But um, it was so stagnant and stale. And it, um, it, it felt like everything had been decided before I got there. And you could not bring up anything hardly at all. And so my concern is repeating that history. Mm -hmm. that's so that's, that's where I'm at. I, I'd say that Eli, what's his last name? Maybe I remember in the new Corvadero. The youngin. Yeah, the youngin. Yeah, yeah he's Eli. Great. I know, and I've, I've had some email exchanges with him, but I haven't had an opportunity to meet him. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. He'll join. So, you know, you know when when uh, we first got on, I think Michael and I, the first thing that struck me was they had no procedure for the the, the manager's uh, salary. I mean, it just I came to that us, up. and we completely reversed that. Okay, for you. Made them adopt social media. Um, we, uh, we got on the finance committee, 
and completely mm -hmm. change the the change, you know, how the finance committee works and what we did. Uh, Michael and I, um, the NPDES permit when we were there. So we really, I think, we have made some inputs. They wanted to do an 11.4 million dollar project, which would be 13.5 million dollars. And we, wait a minute, this is a project without any merit, and we stopped it. And they, and actually, the board, you know, started to think about things. So. I think we've got a chance to make changes, but we do better if we've got a little bit longer on there. That's my opinion. And that's why we did it. We may we may just keep changing every yeah. two months. I mean two years, but who knows? But that's a good point. Yeah, we don't have to do it. So uh I mean, we... any more comments here? Oh, you do have a comment. Point to point. Oh. I just want to talk to the two of you about the financial issue and the power of cogeneration thing that I ran into at the, CM, at the CSA, CASA, I guess it's CASA, that I hope that Jason is taking a look at, but you two in particular would, would find that back. Well, these are, the, these are the two CMSA people. Oh. What? All right. So yeah, I'm off because we keep rotating off. <laughs> and okay. now that I'm on, I decided that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I didn't understand. What, what do you mean? With... Um, a guy made a presentation there talking about storing methane, pumping it, keeping it in a tank oh, yeah. during uh, base pricing time. And then running a generator during peak time, where the value of the electricity that you generate is about a hundred times more, yeah. and it's it, a it, it is way up. I mean, there are three, there are three tiers, and the peak, which which can be needs be started very quickly and stop. Uh, the methane is worth a whole lot more during that time, and that's a time when. The sun, it's usually late yeah, in the after the solar. After the solar is night. Did we, did we have a chance for that? Uh, we looked at storing methane yeah. at CMSA. It's very expensive. Thank you. Yes. And, and, but this guy, one is there's a guy from Berkeley who's working with Santa Rosa on a, a way of getting more methane out. Mm -hmm. And the combination of that and the tank, uh, it gets a payback in about three or four years. And thereafter, you get. Yeah. We are searching for uh, sources for methane. See, we get um, waste from restaurants, you can search for and that's a pretty good program. What we need are some breweries and some cheese. Mm -hmm. We got two new breweries in there, and Santa Rafael coming up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that, that would be. Because yeah. we don't have enough. Product right now, yeah. generate 1.7 megawatts. So that's key. Okay. I understand your idea that um, I'd like to know that we uh, do the uh, approve the agenda. The, uh, consent. Consent agenda. Thank you. I second the motion to approve the consent. Okay, the consent calendar has been moved and seconded in for the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 11. Consideration of adopting Ross Valley uh, Sanitary District Administrative and Personnel Policy Board. And I think both the Finance Committee and the mm -hmm. HR Committee looked over this, so that's four of us. Um, yes, thank you. So the policy book uh, that is presented to you tonight is an updated version from the version that we saw in July with some red lines uh, after uh, several meetings with the representative group. And uh, you'll see that there's just a few policies that that, that affected um, listed in the staff report. The um, uh, items that are um, that are really important for me to mention to you as a group um, that are included in the policy book are 
uh, natural disaster uh, pay, which is, as uh, Director as President Gaffney pointed out, we did discuss with the HR committee and the, and the Finance Committee, but the benefit of the full board this is a new um, uh, method of compensation for staff who would not be able to report to work due to a natural disaster for a district facility, a district owned facility. Um, another policy that is new in this book is uh, compensation time in lieu of overtime pay for hourly employees and administrative time for salary employees. And uh, lastly, I think of uh, interest to the board is a per diem method of compensation for travel by uh, the board or district employees who are um, uh, attending the conferences or training programs outside of um, the area. The General Services Administration, the federal uh, branch of the government, um, dictates how much is appropriate for reimbursement for meals at any given location within the United States. And typically, somebody who's done travel comes back to the district and submits receipts for their meals. Say, for example, if you're in Monterey, you know, have the $18 maximum for breakfast, a $19 maximum for lunch, and a $25 maximum, I'm sure my math right here, a um, $34 maximum for dinner. Uh, the new policy would um, pr provide $76 a day per diem to board members or staff who are traveling on behalf of the district. The, the main thing to remember about the per diem policy is that it would have to be applied for in advance of the travel. If it's um, after the travel date, then uh, meal reimbursement receipts is the, is the standard for reimbursement. Hmm? And by approval, I think the document states. Yes, absolutely. And it's uh, the, the same forms that we've been typically using in the past. So those are a couple of the highlights of the um, uh, changes in the policy book. Um, it's, I think, a big improvement in terms of the legal requirements for leave and general administration for policies over the 2001 handbook that the district's been operating under for the last 15 or 16 years. The, the Finance Committee also requested some changes to the policy book to reflect that we feel the board should have to follow these policies too. Well, yes. we are technically employees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are. There are. For example, we need to apply uh, when we go to CASA or something for the reimbursement. Right. We, we need, you know, there's the per diem if you collect it, and we need to uh, use a personal automobile. Yep, yep, yep. So I think we should all sign these. Yeah. Um, or you, can, or you, you can't use your automobile for, like, well, you know, like cleaning the mileage. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so your automobile insurance would be primary in the event of an accident yeah. on, on district business. So when you're going to Casa and you've driven down to Casa and you're you know driving around Monterey, you get into a little fender bender or what have you, you're using your own insurance for that for that event. Um, and I think uh, it's a good point that you mentioned. Uh, staff can come back to the board with specific policies in the policy book because I think there's some policies that are clearly not relevant to the board, but there may be others such as the, the personal vehicle use and the travel and reimbursement policy that are a benefit for the board to recognize that, they're, um, that they should abide by those. And uh, Council and I were talking about just earlier this afternoon that the board policies uh, can be brought, you know, there's a packet and the board policies that can be brought back to the, the whole board and can reference which policy specifically in this policy book are relevant to the board directors. Any other? I'm just thinking of the car thing. Yeah. Does that mean we have to let our insurance company know? Does that mean we would the the minimum required I mean, minimum required insurance in California is suitable for the district's requirements? So you're just certifying with the district that you are covered. You you have insurance. Yeah, just and you have a driver's license. Yes, <laughs> and your car has seatbelts. Yes, <laughs> and it's a good operating condition. Appendix, whatever it's called. It's Appendix C. Appendix C for the car. Well, I went over the whole thing and saw that the, a lot of the red lines then were submitted by the union. Yes. And this has been a long negotiating 
process, and it's quite a piece of work that he's done. Any other questions by the board? Yeah. Any comments? I have, I have a question. Okay. 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 No. Um, I found it really interesting on page 2 of 16 that when someone re calls in, that they leave a message. Yes. I mean, to me, let's say you don't get the message, or the power's out, or, or something weird. You'd be sitting there, possibly, you know, way understaffed. I don't know. It's it's very interesting. So the union de demanded that change? The, we had several conversations among staff about the best way to report an absence. And the nice thing about um, this particular solution is that the voicemail messaging system that we have now, it's VoIP, so it's voice over internet protocol. It transcribes the, um, the audio message into an email and it actually also sends the audio file via email to a list of subscribers of our choosing. So this phone number, dedicated phone number, to call in sick will actually um, send a message to all the managers and all the supervisors. And the nice thing about that is that there's redundancy built into that system. If there's a disaster and this is out, you're not going to get it. If there's a disaster and this is out, I depend on if there's other communication devices that I just don't agree with this at all. Also available. It, working in a hospital, yeah. it's you can you're not allowed, and it's because they have to know how many numbers are going to be there. But what would you recommend that? That they talk to a person. A, a live well, it's being. out. If the if the cell phones are out, also I think is what the director uh, President Gaffney is suggesting. Um, we're relying on technology in some manner or another. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one, what is the mile to re reimbursement? What, what it's, it's approximately 55 cents a mile, but it changes every year. Okay. Oh, well, not every year, but I think it... It's well, a federal standard. It's a federal standard. Okay. It goes up. And then um, on the uh, dress code. Yeah. What page is that? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, four dash three one. Um, now, there are people in this world who are extremely allergic to scents, and most institutions have something about strong scent, perfumes, or very long nails. When you, so I noticed. That none of that's in here, and I was just wondering if that could be added. I can, I'm happy to speak to that. I think the interesting thing about policy books is that they're very, they're unique to each individual organization, and they are developed oftentimes as a result of issues that an individual organization may face. So it's possible that in the future the district may adopt a policy that incorporates a, a, a scent um, prohibition or a prohibition on you know any number of other things. But again, generally those develop over time as a result of a particular issue. The philosophy that was developed, the philosophy, the underlying philosophy of this policy book is if it's if it's not a problem, then we don't necessarily have to address it as a as an issue. Okay. So it was it was less is more. Right, but people do have allergies, and I've seen people leave their jobs because of this, so I just wanted to give you a heads up. Yeah, I appreciate that, and I think the opportunity to update this policy book, it should be taken every year, okay. and not every 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. And uh, since it's a policy book, we can take you know one page or something out of it and bring it and amend it. That's right. And move it. And that's right. We would have to go to the union to take. It's not easy to amend this. Oh, I know what I wanted to say. I forgot. Sorry. Okay. And the media contact. The next page over. What What is the page on? Uh, page four dash three two. It's the last section. Okay. Four dash three two. Policy four policy four oh nine. Four dash thirty two. Four thirty two. Mm -hmm. So we've had long <laughs> years of discussion about getting um, the Marin TV station in here to make our meetings live. 
and the equipment is pretty reasonable. And I, it, Greg said, oh yeah, 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 and then everything else, or you know, the rest of CIP and everything. So it kind of got by the wayside, and I'm, I'm wondering. Um, I don't know. I just think it's. I mean, they have planning commissions now that are live. That's and because they're in town council chambers that are already set up for that. We have to have our meeting somewhere else. No, we don't have to have it somewhere else. I'm just saying this room would have to be wired up by the Marin Community Television, yeah, as has many of the town council chambers already have. And I think think it wasn't that much. It was under a thousand. But anyway, I just wanted to know what happened to that. Was it sort of lost in the shuffle? Is there no interest or? I think there's absolutely an interest in that, and it certainly would we be, might get some more people. Well, it would, it would certainly be uh, more efficient for staff when we have our own facility and our board meetings are happening. What's that building? Well, you know, in a regular location, as you know. Uh, well, I don't know if you do know because we haven't gotten to that item yet. Or didn't we talk about it? Uh, no, we didn't. Okay, so the November 14th meeting. This room's not available. So we're actually going to have to have the November 14th meeting next month at the current location. So it's just, you know, we're at, we are kind of at the mercy of the availability of this uh, room. And, and I think to Director Kelly's point, if you have your own facility, you can wire it. So in other words, forget about it. And there's, there's, a device, there's a device that's about the size of that that needs to live there. So at the San Somo You can't take it with you? No, that thing sits there. Oh, I thought it was. Um, what is the lag time between the meeting and when it gets posted online? You 72 know, hours. 72 hours. It's not like it's an interactive. Oh, you mean in terms of the, the, the post, the post video. video? Oh, post it's video. Julia, longer than that. <laughs> um, two or two. A week or two? A week or two. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been getting way better. It yeah. It's been getting way better. Yeah, because I was looking at me and sometimes I were two months old. I was like, oh my god. No, we talked about that yeah. with Julie, they got and that's got changed. Now it's right there. All right, I'm just on it. Okay. okay. Any other comments? I move to uh, uh, adopt the Ross Valley uh, Sanitary District Administrative and Personnel Policy Book. Second. Second. Go for it, down there. Any, any, Second. All. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 12. Thank you. Consideration of adopting resolution 18-1548 approving a side letter of agreement between RBSD and the union local 2167. Thank you. So after uh, many meetings with the uh, representative group, the, uh, the district uh, staff and representative uh, business agent and shop stewards uh, present a final proposal to the board of directors which would extend the MOU uh, which expired in June of 2018 by one year. Um, the other terms would be uh, a cost of living adjustment, a COLA based on the San Francisco Bay Area Index between April and April, this April and the April of last year which would equivalent is equivalent to 3.2%. Um, we will continue to <coughs> take district uh, take dues out, union dues, and submit those to the district. Um, I mean, to the uh, ASME. Beg your pardon. Uh, yeah, we won't keep we won't keep those. We'll collect them and pass them on. Uh, a joint labor management committee um, was formed to establish the competency-based training program implementation, and that's been going very well. Uh, it was. Uh, decided that if there were any bargainable, what I'd call bargainable events, changes to hours, wages, or working conditions, that those items would be part of the next negotiation cycle. The um, district would conduct a classification and compensation study in preparation for the upcoming uh, next negotiation, which will be in, you know, pretty, pretty shortly uh, coming up here in the spring of next year because the MOU, the extension of the MOU is only one year. And since we're already in October, <laughs> it's, uh, three months in for that year. Um, one of the other items was that uh, the district payroll practices would be aligned. Our straight time and overtime, as the board is aware, um, are not currently in alignment. In order to get them into alignment, 
the district would agree to uh, pay the uh, representative group and subsequently the, the, another agenda item, the representative group, one week salary to help make that payroll adjustment within our uh, payroll system. And then lastly, there were, um, as uh, Director Silva was pointing out a little, uh, a little earlier in the agenda, that there were two exceptions to the new policy book. Um, otherwise, it was accepted in full. And the two exceptions were, accept were exception to order layoff and the performance evaluation program. In the performance evaluation program, they wanted to retain the original policy from the 2001 employee handbook. And uh, with regards to the exception to order of layoff, it really wasn't a matter of dispute between the district management and the representative group. It was really just more of it. They wanted additional time to explore what that language, final language might look like. Uh, and I'm sure they'll take that opportunity at the next negotiation cycle. So that concludes my report, and staff does recommend um, execution of the cycle. Any discussion at that point? Who's going to do the uh, classification and compensation study? We did that before, didn't we? Yes, and I don't know, that was before my time, which consulting firm you used, if it was RGS or COP or CPSHR, there's a number of different firms that, that, that do it. Um, Patrick um, uh, Clark, our labor negotiator, actually recommended a small firm by the name of Bryce Consulting. I contacted them. Shelly Anderson is the name of the um, of one of the primaries there, and she gave us, a, I thought, a very reasonable uh, cost for it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be meeting with her later on this month. And didn't we, we decided on the other agencies? Uh, there are 10 agencies that I think the district used in the past that were agreed upon uh, with management and the representative group. I don't know what those uh, agencies are on the top of my head, but I'm going to have to find out. <laughs> we can use the same ones. Yeah. They're, 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 they're documented. We can use the same ones? Yeah, I think, yeah. That, I think that the union would appreciate that. Yeah, because we made some and then they added a few or changed a few up. Yeah, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Those have already been decided. Okay. Yeah. So this uh, kind of supplements the, the policy book. Right. Looks good to me. Okay. <laughs> Any other knowledge? I move we adopt resolution number 18-1548 approving the side letter of agreement between Ross Valley, the Ross Valley Sanitary District and AFSCME Local 2167. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 13, consideration of adopting resolution 18-1549 approving salary and benefits schedule for unrepresented all right, so this is the third item of the three item package that we've been talking about for the last couple of months here. This is um, a little bit different than the board has seen in the past. In the past, the board's um, adopted a terms and conditions document for unrepresented staff. Uh, management's recommending that we let that uh, terms and conditions document expire, which it did expire in June of 2018 and instead adopt a resolution for salary and benefits for unrepresented staff. Now, this um, resolution, as well as the policy book, should encapsulate the entire comp comp uh, compensation uh, for all unrepresented staff. Um, unrepresented staff are being offered, uh, with the board's approval, uh, the similar COLA as the represented staff, that's 3.2%. Um, as well as the same salary adjustment um, opportunity for the, for the payroll period. The, the council, uh, I think, would like to make an amendment to the resolution to add a recital with regards to contract employee employment. Um, it's important for the administration of um, compensation to understand exactly what contract governs the compensation um, agreement. So in the, in the um, policy book, uh, you'll have, you know, you'll see actually that the, um, it's stated very clearly that the MOU governs um, unless it's 
silent on an issue than the policy book governs. And so what uh, council and all that, Andrea Pike in here, um, that we want to make sure that it's clear for those contract staff that are listed in, in Exhibit A um, of, the, uh, of the resolution, operations and maintenance manager, and the other managers up to including the general manager, that those are contract positions and the contract is the primary uh, government document. <laughs> so specifically, I would add a whereas clause in the resolution noting that where a where there's a contract, so for example, in Exhibit B, we've listed you know, the range here, says by contract. Also in Exhibit A, uh, we have parenthetically which positions are contract positions. So I think there needs to be a clear note that where there are any inconsistencies between a contract and this resolution, the contract governs. Where is B? I don't have B. Exhibit B is on the back of the page of the bit. So the, the document already goes some way to note that that where there are contracts, things are a little different, but it doesn't quite go all the way to say, and where they both address something, for example, COLA I, I don't or see whatever. I, I'm suggesting that a whereas be added. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that would be the amendment. But just to clarify that if if both a contract and this resolution address something but they address it differently, then the contract language governs. Okay. And I'd like to give a very I think clean example of that, which is the general manager's salary. The general manager's salary listed in the exhibit for the resolution states a monthly compensation of nineteen thousand dollars. Well that salary was based on Greg Norby's contract. And you're in a situation now where you know you're going to be negotiating a new contract with a new general manager, and whatever that contract amount is should govern, not this resolution. Okay. So you have sample I, I can summarize that in a motion. Okay. <laughs> should you eliminate I get the, the general manager number? No, 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 no. no, no that's no, just for information. It's fine. It's informational. It just oh, I see. we just need this clarification. I don't know, I'd kind of like to get rid of that. I mean, you, I mean we're going to offer it. Are we going to have that salary? No, no. This no, is no. not work. We're not adopting a salary schedule. What, what is what is the You are adopting a salary schedule. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, we are. Yeah, but, but, can we yeah. eliminate that? You mean just the general manager number? Yeah, that number. Right, because it doesn't have a range either. Because here yeah. we have it's by contract for the others, but it's a it's range. Quite and the general manager one is different. Yeah, it's a specific number based on what the contract okay. says to, you know, said a few months ago. So I just put general manager by contract. You could absolutely take that out. Yeah, I have to. Yeah. Just cross out the number. Mm -hmm. But again, that's only one example. Yeah. There could be yeah. others. It's you know, right. Not contemplated in our right. contracts get negotiated. Right. Um, and then uh, is a, a related point um, within the policy book we think it would probably be prudent to add something similarly um, phrased where an employment contract specifically conflicts with the policies contained within the policy book that the contract govern. So I, I, would, I would also recommend that at this juncture the board consider um, that entire concept that a contract, an employment contract is the primary document sure. that governs and then, if, you know, if there's a conflict. That's right. Okay. So what contracts for? Mm -hmm. Okay, any discussion by the Okay, well, I don't really understand this medical insurance. Okay, so two, but, uh, so let's go like, then that's on, it's two, attachment A. Mm -hmm. Insurance? Yeah, it says subscriber, okay, subscriber plus one, up to 100% for both? Yes. Before 2015. Before 2015. Yeah, okay, exactly. But it's a subscriber plus two or more. Kids. Okay, so three kids, and it's 100% for all of them. It used to be. Okay, but okay, now it's 80%. Why, 80%. why break it out? Subscriber. Why have three categories? <laughs> oh, good. Uh, well, the, I thought the, it was it different or something? Subscriber, yeah, the cost of the benefit are different. Subscriber and benefit. And benefit. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. It could be just say subscriber plus 80% of total. Plus dependents. 
80% of them. Yes. Up uh, uh, to 80% of the trays are supplied. Yeah. This, this, this language was negotiated back in 2016, if that helps at all, and it was part of the terms and conditions document. So in order to make sure that the unrepresented staff didn't um, lose any benefits from breaking the terms and conditions document, we simply cut, copied, and pasted okay. what was in the terms and conditions and included right. in this resolution. Because that was my next question. Right. Is it, yeah. Did we have a committee of unrepresented uh, employees that helped? Not this year. No, this year it was just straight. Uh, yeah, there were, I mean, I don't know if it was a committee, but uh, yes, there was a group of unrepresented employees who at one point made it an argument that um, a memorandum of understanding or a letter that was that laid out was actually a controlling binding contract. I remember so, that. Yeah, okay. I was going to say that. Okay. Do you remember You were on the board at that time. Yeah, I was. I was already looking at this. We, we had a, maybe the, we had a vote on it. Uh, okay, back when Wendy was here and Daniel and Pearson? No, yeah. It was, no, what happened was, uh, <laughs> I didn't think you'd hear yes, that. Yes, it was. Yeah, no, we were here one day. Okay. Yeah. And the wow, my mind three. is obviously isn't. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's right, we have an authorization for that. Recycled water to we want gray water in this <laughs> So this is a tentative right. approval. This is going to come back to the it's board for final. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Finally getting something out of smart. <laughs> Oh, well, go, 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 on, go on to our public, please. Public, yes. Can you write a letter to the county to say it is in your interest that they specify or require low flow? I'm sure they do already. They do. You can't they do all. They do already. Yeah. 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 They have new building codes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, do our employees get a discount? <laughs> 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 okay. okay. Any other questions? No. I move to uh, grant tentative approval for the public sewer extension permit number 403 to be constructed within Sir Francis Drake Boulevard to serve Smart Larkspur Station in Larkspur, California. I think I can leave it there. I'll second. Okay, now these, this is an installation is under our supervision and inspection. Yeah, we get what we want. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion? All in favor? All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, Item 15, consideration of authorizing the interim general manager for the council to award professional service agreements with Hilda Rand Consulting for a wastewater rate study of project financial plan not to exceed $49,980. Okay, so this is just a final report from the board. Uh, item already a couple of times. They were very helpful in reviewing proposals and interviewing the top proposer, who was Mark Hildebrand. Um, Mark is uh, sorry that he's not able to be here tonight. He had a, a conflict uh, with his schedule. He's in Southern California. Um, but upon the um, board's review and approval of his uh, contract tonight, he'd be delighted to kind of introduce himself at the November meeting because he does very much look forward to working uh, with the board on this uh, rate study. Um, as uh, the finance committee members noted in the uh, report out, he was the second lowest bid. Uh, he's a local company. Uh, he will not be charging for travel time, which uh, I think is an important uh, consideration. All of the proposals were well qualified consultants. And um, I think his was just uh, reasonably uh, priced. He does have uh, um, considerable experience in uh, water and wastewater. And I think there was a question by um, one of the directors uh, early on about his specific wastewater uh, rate uh, study experience. And Julia, I think, has a handout for the board that she can distribute for additional information. Um, thank you. And that concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I wanted to add to what I said earlier during the uh, financial meeting uh, report out. Um, no, um, in addition to talking about the Larkspur uh, ad valorem versus uh, fee rates, um, we asked him to be very, very clear and opened and um, uh, make sure that this document talked about our outstanding unfunded pension liability and our outstanding unfunded OPEB liability. We want to be absolutely clear. We want to have as much time in that document as necessary so that the public knows that we are looking at this, we're addressing this, we're not trying to hide anything. We're not trying to say our unfunded pen pension liability is fine and, and put a paper. We need people to know what it is and how we plan to fund it. And some of it clearly comes out of rates and some of it comes out of ad valorem and we want to be as clear and concise and truthful with the public as we possibly can. So that was that was a big part of what I asked him to do, uh, in addition to the things he mentioned in his document. And the advantage of him over the person who's a little bit cheaper? Learn Henderson about uh, that. <laughs> we'd, be, we'd be charged for travel. Oh, we would be? Yes. Oh, we okay. would be by them. And, um, I mean, I heard we wouldn't be charged for travel. You're saying Hillbrand. He's not charging us. Phil Brand is not charging us. But he's right. from the East Bay. He's right. Right. So the only thing is weird on here to me is his education. An M E S M is environmental sciences. Math is environmental. Okay, and he has a bachelor's, but he doesn't say one. Civil engineering. Can you put that down? 
That's a very fabulous major. <laughs> do, we know do, you have one, do you have one of those? I, I, I do. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fabulous Catherine, what, what would, would you say? <laughs> <laughs> Has he got some problem here or something? It's, oh, it's just to me it's strange. It's just very strange when it's all And then I got the list. Thank you for that. Um, and, and you all think he's done a lot in wastewater. Even though These are all wastewater studies on his list. Because it keeps saying city, 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 city. This is full service water rates. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I mean. Uh, we like him, uh, and then I have to admit I personally know the other motivator. Okay. And I think it's very good for Okay. Thank you. And uh, I do think being local is key. Yeah. Well, and, and take a look. Oh, and he also had about $5,000 uh, of that fees for optional items involving the consolidation. Oh. So we, we so may see him or we may not. Okay, so I this may... about $5,000. Okay. The, the, the other thing is, if you look at the other ones, yeah, there, there was one that was less at 38, he's 49, so that's 11. But the next one goes up to 78, there was a right. 89, 97, and 180, so he's, he's less than half. Raffles? Who did our rate studies last year? It was a H and H, 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 that's what I think. Or he has the format yeah. now. Or, you know, I was very surprised. So that. how is this guy's public speaking? Oh, he was yes. delightful. Because he was, he was really good. The guy we had before, I didn't, do you remember? Yeah. And we yeah. had these massive people in the gym. Yeah. Right over at the base of the gym, whatever. And there was some way he just did not right. gather, yeah. gather the people. Well, it was a very yeah, it was a very contentious time, and he was a little bit top down. Yeah, I don't think just, we're gonna have that situation. But well, I thought Mark was delightful. I, I really Talk enjoyed his personality. Oh, was, yeah. oh, was I really liked Mark's personality. Oh. Okay, good. Very, very That's important. Um, I wasn't even on the board yet. Okay, but he would get up and explain why the rates. And when it was for Brett, he would get up and explain why the rates had to go through the roof, and it was it was not a it was a. It didn't work. No. Well, I I'm hoping, and I this board has spoken this in public a number of times. I'm hoping that we're not going to be putting the rates to the roof. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In fact, we have a it's nice to hear that. potential <laughs> policy. I was thinking we might adopt. And I'm sorry. Policy. I have to apologize yeah. one thing. Just on that. And we also told him that. Uh huh. We think that's going to change his numbers. Well, we, uh, yeah, we're going to change it. CMSA, which is half. All right. Of, we're going to change CMSA, which is I half of our budget. budget. We worked very hard over the past few years to get them to basically commit to keeping an absolutely. We know you've got to raise your rates. You've got to. Well, we have to raise our rates, but we know what the rate raise is going to be for the next. We lock them in to three point five percent. I want to be clear. They're half our budget. One of one of the complaints I have with running municipal water is because some of the people who ran said they weren't going to raise any rates, and what happened was they put themselves in a hole. Yeah. And their credit rating goes down. If you don't have some consistent dedication to the cost of living increases, the credit ratings are going to screw you. And then the cost of bonds is higher, and the cost of uh, uh, state revolving funds for you may be higher. So it's 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 not in the best interest to not have any rate increases. It's just in our best interest not to suck it to people when they're already getting sucked. We have to right. We have to keep up. Yeah, that's right. Because if we fall behind, especially the cost of construction, later, right? then later on. Who screwed at the other end? Yeah. Well, listen, it's patent folly. If 50% of our costs are going to go up 3.5% a year, and uh, the other biggest chunk of our expenses are salaries, and they go up at the cola of 3.2% a year. Right, we can't not have So, you can, what nonsense not to increase your rates. Right. I don't want to go up to 7% like we did because we had to catch up, and we had a huge amount of projects, but I think we're. That's what the target range is for us, and I think the public will accept that. Yeah. I don't have any problems. Right. Um, Hildebrand had a, a comment from one of his previous clients who put it in his deal. He was one of the best at exploding rates that this fellow had ever seen. So that's, that, that's something we really want. 
Are you looking for a motion? Yes. On that note, I move that we authorize the interim general manager upon review and approval of council to award a professional services agreement with Old Friend Consulting for a wastewater rate study and five year financial plan not to exceed $49,980. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank you. Okay, let's go over the 16s. The first one is the performance metric. 6,000. Oh, we had 6,000 as a, as a um, optional. optional. Well, we it's might do sure, yeah. that if we get involved with, we might do not all of it necessarily, if we get involved with memory Oh, okay. Uh, any comments on the matrix? Uh, yeah, just when, on uh, the second, on the table one. Um, okay, table one, yeah. Uh, after are you, are you on B are, are we on this yet? No, we're on A. Oh. We can get to B. Yeah. Well, I want to uh, commend the staff for getting the uh, smoke testing done before the yeah. schedule came up. I have never seen that. Uh, no spill report again for the month of September, which is fantastic. Now, remind me, we had one spill last month, was it? Last week. Last week. Yeah, October. But we had no spills in August, no spills in September. Um, in no, we, we had we one in August? Them. Yeah. We had one in August, 30 gallon, and then no spill All in right. September. No spill in July. <coughs> yes. No, no spill in July. July. <laughs> and the one in advance of that the next month report, what was the spill in October? Uh, right now it was at 33 Scenic Ave, uh, San Anselmo. Uh, we calculated at 1,000, I think 95 gallons. We recovered 700, though, of it. And it was uh, the guys did an amazing job. We had a very what long was night. Cause of that? Uh, pipe failure of a sewer line going right in the middle of a storm drain. Of what? A storm drain. Storm drain. Um. So. <laughs> and 27 point repairs. Mm -hmm. I think this uh, calls and staff hours is really an interesting one. The, you know, a lot, a good share of our calls are private SSOs, and uh, we go out and can help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. the key. Mm -hmm. And then we've got to memorize all these abbreviations. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We have them spelled out right there. Every, every month. I use that every time I remember. Okay, then 16B, I think we have something. Yeah, I just. Uh, just on the, the grid or whatever you want to call it. And um, if you could just put in some dates, halfway down to the next page, to the, almost the end, there's no dates. So date contract was awarded. Might be helpful to you. Is that, it doesn't, it doesn't, it just says gravity sewer improvement project. So that date is when it was awarded. Mm. Well, if you're looking at the gravity sewer, so yes. they have in the names, you know, fiscal year 15, 16, fiscal year yeah. 16, 17. I would just like that. to know, are these 17, 18, 16, 17? What oh, so the large diameter gravity sewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two dash two, for example. Be, yeah, I think yeah. it might be helpful to have um, contract award dates included in that. It is in the two. How about this? Contract SMA award is in the Yeah, that's, that's what I really want. Or is this in the Oh, yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Then we, Cool. Somebody there? asked me on the street. Uh, if you look on the next thing, if you look on the smaller table, they do have dates. So this this also brings up the issue that we talked about with public outreach. Um, I called up the San Rafael Public Works Department to find out, um, and I was right there, um, when Second Street will be done. Because I don't know if any of you traffic on you do, because you're in Fairfax. You know, Second Street, they're doing work at night, thank gosh, because um, in the morning they're kind of cleaning up, but they got two lanes shut down on Second Street. And it's challenging. Um, the answer to that is, by the way, it's Thanksgiving, and it's mostly PG&E work. Um, yeah. But this is the kind of thing that I, why they, and we don't do it too, so we've been asking this, why don't have, they have a big sign right at the beginning, San Rafael Public Works, PG&E work, estimated completion date, Thanksgiving 2018. You know, I, I still want that for our projects because I think it'd be very helpful. Um, and again, the, the, the sandwich board things with our logo and our, our name and, and people realize that their money's 
getting spent wisely. Yeah. There is a beautiful sign like that on Pump Station 15. Yeah, there's a new one on Pump Station 15. So, it is an MV5 beauty. But by the bike path, the Pump Station yeah. garage near my house. Yeah. 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 Which I never go by. Anticipated, <laughs> anticipated my repression would be very good to have. So yeah. my, my last, so PGE <laughs> above my street is ripping up the road. Huh. And I thought Greg had kind of already put out feelers to let everybody know when they do work, we try to do work. But this has been going on for weeks, the road's closed. I think it's probably going to be as bad as scenic, which was caught closed for three months I think, by the time we came. Because we're like the skinny road, woodsy, narrow, and winding. Right. So do you keep, is there anything we can do? because? Rip those roads up there and then replace them. It's just I think the reopen, best, reopen. I think the best source of information for projects, whether it's PG&E, MNWD, paving, sewer uh, replacement or repair, is really the local public works department. Like Director Kelly was saying, you know, he contacted the Santa Fe Public Works Department. I think the Fairfax Public Works Department, we know the Fairfax Public Works Department, know who's working on their streets when and for how long. So they don't contact you and say, hey, we're going to do this project. Do you need to do anything? We coordinate everything through the Public Works Department, kind of like we were talking about a little bit about earlier encroachment permits. So encroachment permits, the encroachment permit process is the way the Public Works Department and any local agency manages the amount of work that's being done in a particular area and also coordinates with the police, fire, and other emergency services um, to make sure that there's adequate access for all residents. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the millions of waste of ripping the road for up for the water, the PG, and yeah. us. And that's why they do moratoriums, and those are also uh, yeah. administered to the public works department. So you, you really don't get notified. Yeah. Not about pg &E projects. Wow, that's true. Unless we're coordinating with the public works department through one of the, where we do a monthly or every other month meeting with the public works department to, and talk about what anticipated projects are going to be coming up and all the utilities are invited to those utility management meetings. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. Just a There's waste, a lot of ways of tax payers. That's what I'm, when Greg first came on board, he said, if there's one problem I wish we could solve, it's coordination, coordination. who's doing, right. what, yeah. ripping up a concrete, when. Sam's almost good at that, better than most. Yeah, Sam's almost great, but I don't hear that anywhere else. And I just keep seeing these projects and I'm like, I feel like asking these questions, it's almost like it's going nowhere. There's so a lot of construction fatigue. I think Second Street is a great example of that. You know, it's like every time you turn a corner, it's like, oh, great, here's another construction project. Don't go near there. Okay, well, summary, we've got uh, 47 million under construction. We've paid about. Anyway, we, yeah, we paid about 20 million so far. Yeah. Okay, 16C is the year end metric, point, and the finance committee had some comments on that of things we wanted to see, yep. but it's not available yet. So it's going to come up next. Can you remember you had a couple? No. Yeah, I wish I could. It was um, it was getting the, the all the um, lateral lateral footage, lateral footage yeah. um, high footage, high footage, and replaced, re replaced repaired. Yes, we wanted to see the status of the NPDES permit. And the status of the NPDES permit. Yes. Because we yes. promised those, we even five years, we wanted to see those. Okay, sixteen. D is the HR And this is mostly staff only. And just as another note on that last one, didn't we have um, approved some software so that we can have... Yeah, I'm uh, sure, right? I'm sure it's so. up. No, no, no. Uh, some money so that we can have a, uh, a board oh, yeah. front like what the CMSA has. Yeah, the dashboard. A dashboard to look at these kinds of things online. When, when that information is available, and hopefully eventually have it online yeah. on our website that people can look at. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, uh, another innovation, I think, of 
our operations and maintenance manager mixes today. Yeah. <laughs> You know, another point about it slices. It does indeed. Steve, you, you went to a meeting, you told us, that um, it's kind of related to projects here, to explain uh, the training program? Uh, we went to Sewer Summit this morning, and Jim McPherson and I did a presentation on Compsy based training, and I thought it went really well. Yeah, how many people? Um, probably about 120 in the room. Wow. But there was several hundred that they, they had four different tracks, and it was an amazing time. And, and many of them said to you, we can't possibly do that, we're too small. Most and you're way larger than us. Yes. Yep. And are we? No. <laughs> Just mighty. Did I ask if you want to dig into the D? Um, Tom, could I ask you a quick question? No. Sure. Uh, are, are the assets of Ross Valley of Santa Estic in the Marin map? Uh, see it, uh, yeah, we're in Marin map. Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, they're available to members only. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the MMWD, anybody who's a member can see our infrastructure. You know, all of the information on it. You have to pay yeah. for that, right? Um, we'll pay to get a lot of the agencies, or most of the agencies are members. Okay. And, and we have that ability also to get information from them. That we I think it's like twenty thousand dollars or twenty five percent. Yeah, it's uh, ten thousand for the large agency and, and six thousand for small. Oh, okay. a year. And that's done uh, run through the county, right? It's administered through the county. <laughs> <laughs> there's a county agency. It's its own entity, Somebody but there's there. a county agency who does the bulk of. And then we're going to 16E, legal activities. It's the highest of the year. <laughs> but included a lot of labor work. They well, work. I'm, I'm, to defend, there was 6,295 on environmental compliance for works of the landing. Um, personnel matters, another 2,000. And then construction contracting 11, um, but general legal services at 15. Uh, does this include the Lieber Cassidy line items I saw in the check? No, it does not. Yes, oh, it does. Oh, it does. does. That's right. Okay. Right. That's not a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. It does include it. Where are they? They're under personnel uh, matters. Yeah, but it was more than that. It was more than that. It was like it may, two, might not have been the same month. Different month. Different month. Oh, okay. Different yeah. month. Okay. There was 11,000 or 12,000. Yeah, 000. right. Yeah. This is about work done. That's about billing. Right. Okay. What the bills we pay. No, it was about <coughs> yeah. 11,000. Yeah. I just want to be sure that it's the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's go back to the. Done our, meeting, November. We, done, we did our last things earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's key. We really covered a lot without Twin Thank you, Tom. Well, I think so long as the, the work that the human resources and economics do, I'm not sure we're ready for this meeting. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Uh, I realized that there was one item I didn't report out to the board that I meant to, but maybe you're all aware that we. Um, suspended construction work at pump station 15 through the winter months. And part of the reason was, um, you know, we were having some trouble with the bypass pumping. The the VFDs, which is kind of the, uh, the, line of the variable frequency drives, which control the electric motors, are were delivered to Sacramento, but still need to be calibrated before they could be delivered. And then they were going to be delivered in, like by the end of October, and we were starting to get Again, the wet weather, we just thought, you know, we've had enough trouble with these, with this particular project that it wasn't worth going out on a limb and ex sort of experimenting with new equipment out there. Pump Station 15 is going to be operating just fine the way it is through this wet weather season, and we will uh, remobilize construction in spring. But we will be using, using the wet so weather. <laughs> we will be using the, the wet well that's in Pump Station 15. Yeah, whatever construction that's been. Um, completed, so, completed far. so far, we'll continue to use. But we, we just, the construction management team felt that it was, that was the best decision, and the contractor agreed to no remobilization costs. 
Great. So it's not going to cost you anything. Right. Right. So, okay. Thank you. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah.